Welcome to this session on adding resources to PRISMs. As was covered in the search and browse tutorial, in order to view items in PRISMs, you need to first add them to your workbench. This tutorial will explore some of the basic functionality of the workbench. So let's go there now. So as you can see, I have two items in my workbench. The first is volume one of Clarissa, a resource already in PRISMs with a facsimile and a transcription. The transcription is available in both HTML and XML. The HTML version is preloaded in the viewing area. I can add the facsimile by simply clicking on the icon. Note that it loads next to the transcription and is color coded the same way. This is to help you find resources when several documents are open at once. You can have multiple windows open at once and move them and resize them as you like. This edition only has a tra transcription and a facsimile, but you could potentially have other components such as secondary literature, translations and so on. The transcription and facsimile are linked, so clicking on a page link in the transcription will display the corresponding page in the facsimile. That's because both of these components come from the same project. That functionality wouldn't be present if the two different components had come from separate projects. The second item in the workbench is a record I created myself from the search and browse page. You can also add an addition directly from the workbench by clicking the plus sign in the header. This record is for something that isn't already in the PRISMS database, but it is related to my research. So I'd, I've added a record for it. Now I need to add the component, specifically the facsimile held by the National Library of France. To do this, I just need to click on the small plus sign next to the edition record. The I symbol to the left of that allows you to focus on just this edition. It, clicking it minimizes all the other windows. The plus icon opens a pop-up with three steps. Firstly, you'll need to select a category for the component, in this case a facsimile. Secondly, you need to give the component a title. You can copy and paste this from the website or make up something that will make sense to you. And thirdly, you'll need to provide a URL. This can be the URL of the page or the embed code if it's given. I've done the embed link and you can see that there is now a facsimile showing under this edition and if I click on it the BNF edition appears within prisms. However clicking on the toolbox icon you can see that there aren't any tools for this facsimile while the other facsimile has the option to add annotations. There is another way to add facsimiles if they are IIIF images. IIIF is an interoperability format. Going back to the Gallica record, you can see that it has the IIIF logo. What we need to do is track down something called the manifest. This will unlock extra functionality, but it isn't always easy to find. I'm going to click on the IIIF icon. This loads the images in a different viewer. Then on the far right is the option to view more information about the edition. If I then scroll down, I finally see the link to the manifest. This is always a JSON file. I'll add a component again. Now you see there are two facsimiles for this edition, showing why the titles are important. The IIIF version has the full functionality. In fact, it's so much better that I'm going to delete the first facsimile I added. Now I can view all three components side by side. What about a transcription for the Gallica text? Well, if there's an existing one online, I can add another component, selecting transcription this time and adding the link, and it will appear on the workbench with the other components. If there isn't an existing transcription, then you can create one. In the adding component pop-up is the option to start a notebook. This allows you to start a simple text with headings, delimiters, lists, and so on. Once you've saved it, it will appear in the component list.
If you'd like a more sophisticated transcription, then we offer a digital editions course, which will get you started with TEI, that's Text Encoding Initiative, text encoding. You can publish your edition on your own web space and add it to PRISMS using a link, as with the other components, or you can ask us to host it for you. That will involve a small fee based on the size and complexity of the text. The types of components you can add aren't limited to facsimiles and transcriptions. You can also add and embed performances of the work, such as a YouTube video and related scholarship, and create or link to editorial apparatus, such as an introduction to the work. Who gets to see your contributions? By default, it's just you. They're saved on PRISMs, but they're only visible to you. When you first visit PRISMs, a unique identifier is saved to your computer and is used to retrieve your contributions when you use PRISMs on that machine. You can find your user ID in the settings menu and you can easily authenticate other computers if you use more than one. Although your contributions are private by default, we would encourage you to share them with others, particularly if they would be generally useful, such as the addition of a facsimile where PRISMs only has a transcription. That brings us to the end of this introduction to the workbench and adding resources. We touched on the sorts of tools available to you in the workbench, such as the annotation feature for the facsimile images. These will be covered in a tutorial on tools in PRISMs. Thank you for listening.